everyone welcome to episode 33 of my doll's house diary now in today's episode i'm going to move away from the main house and just pop up into the attic and i want to make a start on decorating the craft room so i'm going to start by replicating the wallpaper that i've got in my real life craft room and then we'll do a little bit more decorating in the craft room which is this left hand room and then in the central area which is the top landing so without further ado let's get started okay so i found an image of my wallpaper online and i've saved it and here i've sized it to the width of one sheet of wallpaper divided by 12 so this is my 12th scale sample now i had tried to take a photograph of a piece of wallpaper that i had left but because the light wasn't quite right it was slightly darker on one side than the other so when i laid them alongside each other you could actually see the join so i actually downloaded this from the wayfair website where it's called i think tova birds so I then set up a new file and this is the size of an A4 sheet in landscape and then I just dragged the squares onto the new file and matched them up. I then printed that off using my printer's highest quality setting so that you get a really good print and I also saved it at 300 dpi which again gives you a really good quality print and I've printed four sheets of this which I think will be enough but if not I've saved this to my file and I'll be able to print another sheet if I need it but I just really wanted to save on ink because when you're printing at that higher quality you do use quite a bit of ink so do just bear that in mind and only print what you think you're going to need and I've got those here and they're just sort of drying off at the moment Okay, so just up in the attic craft room now, and I've put the chimney breast there, and on second thought, I am actually going to put the chimney breast back in. Now, I was going to remove it so that there was a little bit more room against that wall, but a couple of things. First of all, if that's there, it gives me some nice sort of little areas where I can have a little table there, and then I can have my main work desk in front of the sort of blocked up fireplace oh sorry and then maybe a little unit over in the corner so i think actually it will make a nice little feature in the room and then the second thing um, is that although changes would have been made to the house it probably wouldn't have been structural changes and certainly not knocking out a chimney breast so it does sort of make sense that that's there even though in the last episode i said that it, it wouldn't really matter but thinking of it when you sort of look at the house as a whole, even if you just look across the attics, you can see the chimney breast there, and then just to have one not there wouldn't look quite right, as it wouldn't if I sort of didn't put one back in that room when there's one below. So I am going to put the chimney breast back in. And then the other thing I also said in the last episode was that I would leave the ceiling paper that colour. But actually in my um, real sized craft room where I'm using the bird wallpaper, I've teamed it with a really nice paint called Vancouver, which is a really sort of pale gray blue. So I'm actually going to paint the ceiling in that colour and obviously the, the roof part ceiling as well up there. Okay, so I've given my paint a good stir and I've got here a rather flared half inch paintbrush and then a smaller brush which I'm going to use to apply an undercoat of the same colour, so the lovely sort of pale blue grey, to the door and the door frame and then I'll be able to go over that in white, do a couple of coats of white as this dark wood just isn't going to go with all the lovely light colours that I want in here. So actually on the ceiling I can apply my paint without taking too much care along the edges because obviously these are going to be covered. But I have put a little bit of masking tape over the um, sort of light connection there so that I don't get any paint in there. And then on this roof area I just want to go up to that line because I'll be keeping the landing ceiling in the cream. 
So it's just sort of this bit that I want to do. And then I'll be putting a little bit of wallpaper over the existing wallpaper that's already there in the window recess. And in these little sort of triangle areas as well. Okay, so let's get started. I'll just prop you there. <laughs> My tripod isn't, isn't even tall enough to reach up here and I'm standing on a step ladder. But do be careful if you're sort of climbing around to get up to your doll's house. really like this Vancouver colour. Like I say, it's a nice sort of pale grey-blue sky colour. And it goes really nicely with the wallpaper, which has got a sort of duck egg blue background. And if you're painting over this sort of embossed style, paper then do make sure that the paint is sort of getting into all the little nooks and crannies so that you haven't got any of the original colour or the natural colour showing through. And where you can see it sort of starting to bubble there is where the copper tape runs below the paper and I didn't put any glue over those areas when I actually fixed the paper but you'll find that as your paint starts to dry that that will shrink back and that usually happens overnight. I've also got some bits of kitchen towel here handily folded for any little errors. didn't intend to get it up there on a stone coating but I can always paint over that. I've got a lot of sort of stone coating to touch up on the outside of the house so I can do that at the same time. Okay so that's the first coat done and I'm going to let this dry completely before I attempt the second coat and that little area there and then I also did over those pieces of wallpaper that were in the um, sort of recesses there and that's just because the paper I've printed my new wallpaper on is a lot thinner and I didn't want the older pattern to show through so have a think about that as well and then I've also done one coat on the door and again that will just act as the undercoat and then I'll be doing that in a lovely North Pole white to match the skirting board. So I'm now going to leave this to dry overnight. So that's now two coats of paint applied and they are now almost completely dry. I've still got a bit of a wrinkle across the copper tape there but to be honest it looks worse through the camera than it does actually look in real life but what I'll do is I'll put a bit more paint on and then use a hairdryer and see if I can get that to shrink back a little bit more. And then what I want to do is apply a coat of white paint to the door and door surround. So I'm going to apply the paint quite thickly over the wrinkled area. Just to sort of really wet it down again. And then I've got my hair dryer here. So I'm now going to give that a blow dry and see if that shrinks back. A bit. Okay, so I heated that up probably for a couple of minutes and that has actually shrunk back quite nicely. Now, still on camera, you can see a bit of a ripple there. But actually, looking at it from this angle, it does look quite nice and flat. Now, it's not going to go completely flat because obviously there isn't any glue under that part of the paper. But just by sort of wetting it down again and then drying it with a hairdryer, it has sort of shrunk it back quite nicely. So that really is as good as I'm going to get it. 
So what I want to do now is the coat of white paint on the door and door surround. And for that I'm using this North Pole white emulsion, which is nice and bright. So that's really going to stand out against the wallpaper. And I'll probably need to do a couple of coats of this over the top of the Vancouver. And again, I don't have to worry about going over onto the wall with this because I'll be papering over that wall. So that's now two coats of paint on the door and surround. I'm going to let that dry now and then see how it looks because it may turn out that it needs a third coat and another gentle sand in between. But whilst that's drying I want to tidy up the chimney breast. So I'm hoping that most of this paper should just peel off quite easily. <laughs> I do like peeling paper. difficult to get off the embossed paper that's really stuck fast on there. So always just peel off what you can by hand. It's quite enjoyable as well. And then I'm going to go and get some spray and have a go at removing the rest. Actually that's coming off as well. So once I'd removed as much as I could by hand I've just got one of my old flathead chisels and I'm just chiseling off the sort of remaining bits of paper and then if I've got anything left I'll use a bit of window cleaner to remove the sort of paper backing that always sticks. I want this to be really nice and flat so that I have a nice flat surface for my next lot of paper. So most of that came off, but I've just got a few stubborn bits at the front here. So I'm actually just going to use some glass cleaner to loosen that up. So just spray a little bit on. I'll just move the camera back. I don't want to spray the lens. Let that soak in for a moment. And then you should just be able to scrape it all easily away. That's easier than I thought, actually. <laughs> Now I'm not worried about the paper inside the little arch because I'm going to be blocking that off in a moment. So it really is just the paper on the face of the chimney breast. I want it to look really smooth. And I'm just um, scraping off the paper with this chisel. I'm not actually going into the wood, so I'm not putting any marks or anything on the wood. So when you're using it, keep it as flat as you can rather than sort of jabbing at it. Otherwise you will make little gouges in the wood. And then just wipe that off with some kitchen towel. And we're ready to start again. So I now want to block off the sort of fireplace opening. And to do that, I'm using three millimetre thick, one eighth of an inch thick balsa wood. And I'm using balsa just because it's so easy to cut. So I want the piece of wood to sit at the front, so I'm going to place it face down like that. And I'm going to put it, let me just turn around, so that the side and the top is along an edge of the wood. And then that will save me a cut. And I want it to slot inside. I'll just go like that and then bring in my pencil. And then I can cut straight along there. Out. Like that. And then I can cut straight along 
that line. Actually, it's not quite straight, but I'll just position the ruler along my pencil line like that. And then I can work my way around the curved areas. And although I'm not a huge fan of balsa wood for making doll's house furniture, as I don't think it's strong enough, I do like it for projects like this. When you just need to be able to sort of easily cut a shaped piece of wood. And when it's not on show as well, because I find that because balsa has got such a loose grain, you don't get as nice a finish as you do with um, something like a bichy or basswood or gelatong, um, you know, that has that have a closer grain. But it is all down to what you prefer and what you find it easier to work with. So if you enjoy using balsa for furniture, that's not wrong. It's just that I prefer to use the abishi or a, a closer grained wood. So I'm just shaping around my pencil lines there. I think I may need to take a little bit more from that side. Okay, so let's give that a go. So that should just slot nicely in there now. So I've got a little bit of gap in around the edge, but I'm not worried about that because I'm going to be covering the whole thing with some lining paper. So I'll stick this into place now. I'm just thinking I need to take a little bit more of the bottom. No, that's fine. That's standing up straight. And then I can cover the whole chimney breast in lining paper to give us a nice smooth surface for the actual wallpaper. And as well, because the walls have got the lining paper on, this sort of yellowy colour would make the wallpaper look a different shade. So it's good to have everything in the same shade, especially when you're using wallpaper that you've printed yourself just on normal printer paper, which will be sort of more see-through than a bought wallpaper. OK, so let me get some glue and we'll glue this into place. So I'm just going to put the glue around the edge of a little balsa wood piece. My chimney breast is face down there. And I'm just going to slide that into place like that. Press both pieces flat against the work surface. that we're getting a nice straight edge along the front there. I'm going to leave that to dry off for a moment and then we'll apply the lining paper. So I've got a scrap of lining paper here and I just want it so that it comes up around the sides and just tucks around the back nice and neatly like that. But I don't want it to come around these angled parts so I'm going to trim that off using my knife. And when you do use your knife for cutting paper and things like that, it's always important to change the blade before you then try to cut wood again, because it will obviously blunten it. So I'm just going to trim up like that and then come straight across at those angled parts. Like that. same over that side and get rid of that piece and then I actually want to make the folds before I apply the glue Tightly increase it around. Okay, so let's pop some glue on and then we can get that attached. So 
I'm just putting the glue straight onto the chimney breast there and I've got my old brush here I'm going to spread that out with and this is a brush one inch brush that I just keep for um, spreading glue and if you clean it out straight away the glue won't stick in the bristles but the bristles do sort of over time become a little bit hard so then you don't want to use it for paint so it's a good idea to keep a brush just for gluing so I'll get the front stuck into place and then I'll put a bit of glue around the sides and we can fold those sides around bottom there. Press that down. And I'm just going to put a bit on the paper. And I sort of use my Gorilla Wood Glue for more or less everything now because it works really well with paper and I also use it for wallpapering but obviously if you've got um, wallpaper paste then that work, can work just as well I think some brands, especially the sort of less expensive brands don't work perhaps quite as well but I do like using the Gorilla Wood glue for papering but it is a personal choice like that and onto the back crease those edges in so you've got nice sharp edges same at the other side I really can't wait to get that wallpaper on in the little craft room that one around as well and that's the trouble with this sort of MDF wood is that it's got that you know very sort of open grain on the inside this is obviously laminated but the actual wood is just this sort of compacted wood so that's why it's a good idea if you if you're using that sort of wood to use a lining paper and a lot of people in the US do ask me what lining paper is and as you can see it's just a thick paper that covers the walls and hides any sort of defects in the wood or any unevenness so you could sort of, I suppose you could use any sort of um, paper maybe if you had like an old sketchbook or something like that where you've got a really sort of nice grained paper that would probably work and if you buy something in A4 sheets, you're probably going to have big enough sheets to, to use. But the alternative is to use a sort of brush-on primer, although I do find that the paper works better. So I'm just smoothing that out. A little bit of a lump showing there still where I filled in that little archway. But we're going to have a desk in front of this so that will be hidden and once we've got the patterned paper on as well that hides some of the sort of little um, bumps and things that you can see in the walls so i'm going to leave that to dry now and in the meantime i went back through my old templates that i sort of originally made when i lined all of the walls of the doll's house and i've got these and these fit nicely into the craft room so once I actually get to the papering I'll be using these now one is obviously for the door side but because the walls are the same I can use that for the chimney breast side as well and obviously just not cut the bit for the door but we'll come on to that once that chimney breast has dried we can actually start the papering which I'm really looking forward to 
So I just went to dry fit the chimney breast and it was actually about three millimetres short from the top of that side of the doll's house. And that's because I would have originally had a hearth underneath the chimney breast. So I've just cut a piece of wood here, three millimetres, one eighth of an inch from basswood. And that's just because that's the first piece that I came across in my little box of odd bits of wood. So I've just cut that to size there and that will now reach from floor to ceiling. So the next thing I want to do is just make a mark on my wallpaper template and then I can actually start cutting the wallpaper. So let's go out to the doll's house and do that now. Okay so I've got my original template there and as I said earlier this is actually for the door side but it fits nicely on this side as well. Um, where you can see the lining paper overhanging there, it is actually just the lining paper. The actual template does come along the edge there of the actual doll's house and it's the lining paper that needs trimming off a little bit, which I can do at a later stage. But I just really want the template for that right hand side. So I'm going to put the chimney breast into place. And I tried this before but my paper moved so that's why there's already a couple of lines there so I'm just going to redo it. Make sure that's going right into that corner. The chimney breast is in the right place and then I can draw my line. Just do one nice thick pencil line down there. So I can now cut my first piece of paper using that part of the template and I'll probably come over a little bit from this line and then that piece will tuck behind the chimney breast. And then because that doesn't really work that side because I've got that door opening, I've just got here a piece of plain paper which I'm going to put there and I'm going to create a new template for this side. So again, pop the chimney breast back into place. And then to get the sort of slope there, I'm just going to make a fold along the side of the wall there. And then again, I'm going to draw my line. But what I like to do with the chimney breast is wrap the paper around the chimney breast, stick it down on this side and then have a flap for this piece. And that way you get a a whole piece along here because obviously in real life you wouldn't have a piece of wallpaper tucked behind your chimney breast and then a second piece so I like to do it all in one sheet but I'll get that piece into place and then I'll show you how I cover the chimney breast so let's go back into the craft room so I've cut that bit of template off for the right hand side of the chimney breast and I've got it lined up here at the edge of the paper and where the wallpaper has printed, it's got a white border around the outside edge. So if you print your own paper, do just make sure that you're inside the border. And then I'm just going to use a couple of little bits of masking tape to hold the template into place, because obviously it's, I've got a straight line down there, and a straight line along the bottom here, so that the wallpaper isn't going to look skewed. I'll just put a couple of pieces there and one piece over that side as well, like that. And then I've just put a new blade in my knife and when you go from sort of cutting wood to cutting paper, always make sure that you put a new blade in. So lining up the rule like that. Hold on to the rule nice and tight. Make one nice clean cut. Like that. And then I'm keeping all of these little scraps just in case. I need to do any little filler bits or anything. And then come down this side as well. Added an extra little bit on there to sort of tuck underneath the chimney breast. The piece there, and then I'm just going to trim along this bottom edge and get rid of that white 
pura. So there's that first piece. So I've cut away that part of the template that I need there for the left hand side of the chimney breast and then if I just bring in my sheet of paper, I talked earlier about the borders around the actual pattern part of the paper. So if I was to lay that from top to bottom, it fits but the top would have the white border of the paper. So what I'm going to have to do is place it so that the top is within the actual pattern part of the paper which will leave about I don't know that's probably about 15 millimeters five eighths of an inch down there but then I shall be attaching my skirting board so that gap will be hidden beneath that so that is actually a really nice fit so just bear that in mind if you're printing your own paper it may not actually be tall enough for your wall so you might want to do either what I'm doing here if you can get away with just covering up that gap with skirting or you might want to do half and half and maybe have the bottom half of your wall panelled and then just use your printout for the top half. So with this piece I want to create one continuous piece coming around the chimney breast and then along that left hand wall like that. So if I lay the paper on like that this side of the chimney breast, this line along here, isn't actually going to be seen from looking into the room and, it, and you'd have to put your head quite far in to sort of see around that corner so I'm not bothered about having the little strip of white around here. So I'm just going to tuck that round as close as I can so that I've got enough then to tuck around this side and then come along this left hand side to cover my little piece of template there. And because this is nice and easy to do on my desk I'm going to actually do it here and begin by sticking the paper around the chimney breast then I can get that nice sharp line down there and then use my template to cut this section. So let me get some glue on my card just pop that out of the way for a moment. So I'm going to begin by applying glue to the chimney breast Easier if I actually put it directly on there, I think. Make sure you spread the glue evenly and get it right along the edges. so it actually sticks along the bottom even though I've probably gone down lower than the paper will go. Okay, so I'm just really carefully, I want to start the paper at this side. So I'm just checking that I'm within the actual pattern part. So it will come to about there. Yeah, I'm just within there there and then just make a nice crease down that side glue that bit down and if the sort of size of paper wasn't an issue here I would probably tuck that around on that side as well so spread that on like that so much easier when you're doing it actually away from the room. You can get out all those creases. And then I'm just going to turn that like that. I'm still in camera shot. Now let me move you up a little bit. And then again make that nice crease along that side. going to fold it around the back and then lay that down flat 
like that. Really push it into that side. I'm using my nail there to really get it into place. Could have come down a little bit there I've got a little bit more overhanging at the top than I needed so let me just check that that's still going to be within yeah just within my skirting board there so that was lucky and then I can bring in my template for that part of the wall which would obviously go right down to the floor like that and into the side and again, I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of masking tape to hold it into place while I make the cut. And because you're applying the masking tape to the template and the piece of paper that you're going to cut away, you don't have to worry about ripping sort of the pattern off the paper. That bit there like that, and I'll put another bit lower down. And I'll actually also attach that to the work surface. So <laughs> I'm just making sure I've got that lovely crease up there. And then I'm going to have to put the rule on the outside of the cut there and come down like that. And then I can cut straight down from the top. So let me get behind the camera there. And I don't mind if I've got a little bit extra at this side because I can trim that away and I just actually did that with um, the lining paper that was overhanging out there. A little bit of glue in that corner that's just ruckered the paper a bit but I think I need to remove that anyway. I'm just going to go over that again down this side. rid of that bit and if I just sort of tuck my rule in as close as I can and cut down there. I don't want to rip the paper at the side of the chimney breast just come in freehand like that. And then get rid of that, move the template There it is all in one piece and then I just need to get rid of these excess pieces at the top but because the glue is still a little bit wet I'm going to let that dry and then I'll trim those away without fear of sort of ripping the paper when it's slightly damp from glue there's more chance of actually ripping it so do let that dry off and what I'm actually going to do is put that in that nice sunny patch there and let that dry so I'll sand it that way around So my paper has now completely dried into place and I'm actually just going to use my scissors to trim along this top edge. I'm just sort of following around the shape of the chimney breast there. Probably not in the best position here camera wise. Along the top there, just following the line. Snip that off along there, and then just because I can lay that bit down, I'm going to just lay that and trim along there with my knife just to get a bit of a sharper edge. Down there, like that, and then I can just go along that top as well. And then this sort of exposed top bit, I shall be 
applying the stone coating to which is the colour of the outside of the roof so I'll put a bit of that on there as well to make it look like sort of part of the building at the top just trim off along that side as well and I'm really pressing the chimney breast down hard so that I'm not sort of tearing the paper on the front and then you've got a nice neat edge along there so we can now actually start applying the paper I'm going to start off in that corner into place along the line of the ceiling like that trying to wipe my glue the glue off my fingers as I go along. <laughs> I'll just grab some kitchen towel. I just want to use that to smooth that down. Get rid of those wrinkles. And the wrinkles there again are from the copper tape which you can see comes from there and goes straight down like that but most of this will be hidden behind that chimney breast so I'm now going to apply some more glue and we can actually get the chimney breast in place You might have noticed I actually come along these edges here and trimmed off that overhanging lining paper and I just used my craft knife with a new blade and just basically went down the edge one nice sort of sweep of the blade and took that overhanging paper off and obviously this has been drying for ages so it's completely dry but always do make sure your paper is completely dry before you do any trimming otherwise you might rip it. I'm actually just going to put a bit down there because I think that will be where the chimney press begins. A little bit like that as well. And bring the chimney breast in before that starts to dry. I'm just holding the flap of paper forwards and just getting the actual chimney breast into place first. So flat against the floor and following those lines of the roof up there. And then I can bring this flap into place like that. So I'm creasing it along the join there. And see what I mean about how that much looks much neater and much more realistic not actually having a line along the wall there which you wouldn't in real life because you'd obviously feed it around I know that's stuck but I'm just sort of using that to press it against the wall and smoothing that off I really love that paper I think it looks just as nice in 12 scale as well so that's that side done so I've cut the pieces for this wall as well again lining the paper up along the top here so I've got that gap which will be covered by the skirting board down there and then this is where I've joined the two pieces because my A4 paper wasn't actually wide enough from corner to corner but I did actually line it up so that if it were a continuous sheet, this is where the sort of little pattern would, would continue. I was going to say where the little birds would continue, but where the actual pattern repeat would have come out to. 
and then there's just that little tiny join there. So all, if you have to use two sheets of paper, always think about the best place to join them and the least sort of visible place. So I'll we'll just move those out of the way and get a bit more glue on. And I'll start with the bigger piece first. And if you can hear creaking, it's my ladder. <laughs> the doll's house is so high up now that I need to use a ladder to actually get into these attic rooms. glue right into the corner. I really love the idea of having a little craft room tucked away in an attic. It's going to be really nice and cosy up here too, a little smaller room with the slanting ceilings as well. Everything's going to have to be really sort of crammed in. Alongside the door there. I just need to pop a little bit more glue on. Let's bring in that larger piece. And I'll get it sort of lined up around the door first. That paper looks really nice against the white of the door. Let me just grab a fresh piece of kitchen towel just to smooth that on. Okay, final piece over here. I think I might just need a little bit more glue. I really like that. Put that little corner down. And you can't even tell that there's a join there. Okay, so let's have a look from here. So that's those walls done now. And I think I said I was going to do a little bit in the sides, but I actually think that looks quite nice in the Vancouver paint. So I'll leave that like that. So that's all the papering now done. And now I want to make a start on the wooden floor. 